this refrigerator. Initially I got it thinking that it might be a uh, luxury, but as I was, you know, calculating the cost of the refrigerator, I was really surprised to find out that this refrigerator pays for itself. And the way it pays for itself is in not buying ice. When I would go camping with a cooler, with the same setup here, I would use, I was buying ice at four, $4 a bag. It's either 16 or 20 pounds. That's what I was paying for. Like if you make your own ice, you know, it, uh, it's a lot cheaper if you have a, <clears throat> a cooler. But in my case, I had to buy ice. <clears throat> so three bags of ice to get started. One bag, you put it in the uh, cooler to get it chilled. And I leave that in there, just let it melt, you know, maybe 24 hours ahead. And I made sure the food was cold and I was putting in there. Then I would put in another two bags of ice to uh, start the trip. So that's three bags of ice at four dollars a bag. That's twelve dollars. Refrigerator. I got it for five fifty. Last time I checked, they were selling for six hundred and fifty dollars. At six hundred and fifty dollars, figuring twelve bucks a trip for ice, it paid for itself in fifty-four trips. <laughs> fifty-four times twelve gives me the six. Yeah, it paid for itself. That was a real surprise. I was able to justify the cost of the refrigerator easily. In fact, I've been, you know, camping out 150 nights, so I've, I've exceeded, you know, those. It's paid for itself several times over. But you might say, well, a Yeti 45 liter cooler is uh, 10 liters bigger than this refrigerator. This is 35, one cubic feet, foot. Well, not what you think. The Yeti, when you go on their web page, they talk about a couple of things. You want to get that that extreme life, you know, life uh, of ice that they talk about. You know, less, I don't know, a week, two weeks, whatever. You want to get that. They tell you in the small print there. They tell you you have to start with very cold ice. Ice can be 31 degrees or it can be 20 below. And when they do that testing. They're using the coldest ice they could possibly get, I assure you. The other thing is they tell you to use block ice, which is a good suggestion. It does work. I was using uh, block ice, and I got much better life out of the uh, ice. The third thing that they said that's a real deal breaker for me is a 45 liter cooler. They tell you to have a ratio of two-thirds ice to one-third food. And when you crunch those numbers, a 45 liter cooler, you're giving up 30 liters for ice and you only have 15 liters for food. This is a 35 liter. I get over double that space for food. And this is one cubic foot. If you do what Yeti's telling you to, you're going to be able to carry a loaf of bread. <laughs> you better keep that bread dry because it's going to get wet in there. So when you start crunching numbers and analyzing what's going on, you know, you may have a case one way or the other. In my case, it turned out that the refrigerator was a much better bargain for me over the long haul. It's paid for itself. Uh, in, you know, the cooler, you're sending money down the drain. You know, cooler has a tremendous advantage that it's um, very inexpensive startup. If you buy a cheap cooler like I did, 20 bucks, and I put Reflexit on it, and, you know, and I did some things to help make it a little better. Had trouble justifying the uh, the three or four hundred bucks for a Yeti, but you know a lot of people love them. They swear by them. They say they're getting ice that lasts forever in them, and hey, I'm happy for them. Uh, some people use dry ice. I've used it. You know, I, it's a pain in the neck for me to get it. I can get it, but I have to drive like you know half an hour each way to get it. I didn't care. You know, uh, I just use plain old ice. Uh, I don't have the cost for dry ice, but. Um, so for me, um, this thing made a lot of sense, and it still does make a lot of sense. Um, the other is the convenience factor. You know, when you're dealing with a cooler, you have the ice and water, you know, which is great. You know, uh, the water keeps the food ice cold for sure. It's a critical part of that whole equation, and it works very well. But then you got to deal with the water, and you've got to insulate your food from water. you got to keep it dry. I've lost many a loaf of bread to, uh, to water and other things. You know, eggs and stuff, you don't care if they get wet. But, uh, you know, you, there's that factor also. You know, coolers have an advantage if you're in a desert situation. There's recoverable water in a cooler that uh, you could use. Uh, you don't have it here. The other thing that I miss is uh, coolers have ice. I don't have ice. 
So I brought with me some apple cider, uh, hard apple cider, which I made myself. It's very delicious. I'd like to give you a glass, but uh, you're not here. And um, I can't put an ice cube in that, so I have to chill the whole bottle in here or put it in a couple hours before I'm going to drink it. These, these refrigerators, they only put out a little bit of cold. They're not meant to put like a, a six pack of warm liquid in here and cool it down quickly. They're just not meant for that. You know, it might take 24 hours to cool that down. But once you get them at a stable temperature, they use hardly any electricity. You know, I turn this refrigerator on 24 hours before I leave for a trip to bring the refrigerator down to operating temperature and the food I put in there is already cold. If you do that, you can reduce your energy costs by over 50% while it's in that chill down phase. You know, it may take 24 hours to cool the food down. Refrigerator is going to run a lot more. The duty cycle is going to click on and off a lot more in those conditions. You're way better off starting off with cold food, uh, having the refrigerator pre-cooled or your cooler pre-cooled. Same rules for both. Same rules apply for a cooler and a refrigerator. Pre-cool your food. Pre-cool the, the, uh, the cooler or the refrigerator. You want everything as cold as you can get it before you start and you'll use less ice and you'll use less electricity to, uh, to cool things. Um, but having said that, this thing just uh, works great. It, uh, I, I you know, can't help but recommend this. You know, I'm seeing a lot of very inexpensive uh, coolers out there from Asia, names I don't recognize, and uh, I don't know how well they work. I don't know, um, when I say that, I'm sure they get cold, I'm sure they work very well, but for me, energy, whatever refrigerator I get had to be very energy thrifty because of the small size of this. To, to run this refrigerator, I have a 120 amp hour gel cell AGM battery, excuse me, AGM battery in here. Of that, only 60 hours are usable, 60 amp hours are usable. To keep it running in any condition, I have 300 watts of uh, solar power, 300 watt panels. I only need two of them most of the time. One of them, if I'm in New Mexico or somewhere where it's really sunny all the time. Uh, but uh, I camp here in the Northeast under tree cover and clouds and rain, shadowless days. And to squeak me by, I've got to have the uh, 300 watt solar panels. I don't use all of them all the time, but uh, that keeps me going in any conditions. Now, I also have a whole you know, load of Jackery uh, power um, stations and I, I have those to power everything else uh, other than the refrigerator, the lighting in the trailer and a few other little things in here. Um, I can get by with just the house battery in the trailer but the, uh, the Jackeries take the pressure off that and I'm never near the edge anymore. I've always got adequate electricity for everything. So having said that, let's have a look inside this refrigerator. I uh, have spacers all around the refrigerator to give it about an inch of space inside the, uh, the compartment it slides into. This refrigerator has uh, settings on it. You can tell it to shut off when the battery voltage drops below a certain amount. That's for lead acid batteries, if uh, an AGM batteries and gel cells. You don't want to take them below a certain threshold, 10, 11 volts. This one is settable. It has a couple of settings. I think I have mine in 11 and a half. It never shuts off because I, I always manage to keep the voltage up on the batteries. So it's got that smart feature uh, in here. Above the, uh, the compressor, there's an area which is cold, but not super cold. It's in the low 40s here uh, with a thermometer, remote sensing thermometer. I've checked it. And the eggs are pretty cold. You know, they're cold, not ice cold. In here, though, is the main area. And... Uh, has a basket that slides out. Perishable foods go in here. But again, all this space is usable, so it's uh, good for me. I have a light in here, so if at night I want to get something, it's good. So again, this is the uh, the Dometic CFX35. Um, it's popular with van lifers because it's a very energy efficient unit. Pretty small. It's fine for me and, uh, and a guest. I can go, me and a guest, we can uh, have food partial fresh food for the whole week uh, when I'm out camping. So it's really wonderful to have fresh food, fresh vegetables, fresh uh, salad, fresh uh, uh, other, you know, chicken or something, shrimp, whatever you want. This will uh, keep it nice and cold. And this reflects, it keeps the sun off of it, the radiant heat. And, uh, you know, as a uh, 
emergency refrigerator. It's uh, pretty handy too with a power outage. You can haul some of your food out of your refrigerator, put it in here, plug it into a Jackery and have this thing anywhere. It's movable. I can stick it in my car. My car has outlets. My car has outlets in the rear, 12 volt outlets. I can just plug this in. This particular refrigerator runs on 12 volt N120 AC, which is uh, very handy. You can plug them both in at once. AC will override, but if you turn off the AC, the 12 volt will kick in. So it's a uh, pretty good design. I'm pretty pleased with it. Crunch your numbers. You may find you can get a refrigerator for free just on ice savings.